Oh, hi. It's Rob. And I just got done processing uh, the second and third harvest from the pepper garden. And I got six more bags of mash fermenting. Uh, I mean, I've got seven that I did a couple weeks ago, and uh, some of those have already started outgassing quite well. Uh, I've had to rebag a couple, a couple times. But um, I'm trying something new with this new batch. Uh, with the first batch that I did, I put in some spices and additives. Uh, you know, for instance, in the Fatali mix, I added a bunch of pineapple because Fatali and pineapple go really well together. But pineapple has a lot of sugar in it, and that kicked off the fermentation in a way that was uh, unexpected. And there are some really nice things that I learned. Uh, these fermentation, or these, well, the vacuum bags that I'm using for fermentation bags can hold quite a bit of pressure. They do deform. And they will eventually pop. But it's surprising how far they can go before they get that far. Uh, if they do pop, it's a mess. But uh, I was able to find a really nice method of outgassing them. I took a small pin made a pinhole in the bag and then let the pressure reduce to a good point and then I was able to you know, press it down a little bit put a piece of masking tape over the pinhole and that way nothing gets in but if it does overpressure once again it will blow past the masking tape. Uh, so far this has worked pretty well. Uh, we'll see. I've got four bags that are that have gone into pressure fermentation. Uh, three from the first batch have not. I'm not entirely sure why, uh, but they are undergoing a process. Um, there's a liquefaction happening, um, and they're in a saline and acidic environment, so they should be pretty good as far as any kind of you know, bad bacteria or mold or anything like that. There should be none. Uh, we'll find out. I am hoping that this batch will take off smoothly and not go big overpressure uh, because in this batch I did just peppers, salt, maybe a little bit of citric acid. Uh, I did add a little bit of apple cider to a couple of them that were needing of a little bit more watery consistency for the mash buildup, but uh, you know that's got some sugar in it so those might take off. When I'm putting these in the bags, when I finally get them sealed up, I am, I've got a piece of masking tape that I've got on the counter and I measure the total amounts by weight of what I'm adding. That way I've got a recipe that's handy uh, in case it turns out good and I want to re, you know, redo it next year. Uh, if they're ones that don't turn out very good, then I know, you know what's in them so that I can avoid doing that again. Uh, there are some interesting things I learned uh, this time around in making the uh, pepper mash only you can really get the aromas of some of the peppers without all the heat so you can kind of get the base flavor a little bit more and uh, I was really pleased with the butch teas They're, they've got kind of an almost apple -y flavor or aroma to them so it's a very fruity flavor it's not quite apple but it's definitely sweeter than a more citrusy version so I'm I'll be interested to see how those go on the on the ferment when they come out uh, there's also a very notable side effect when working with super hot peppers is that as you grind them as you make the mash the gases that escape from them they're micro fine particles that get into the air and will get on your skin and boy oh boy Doing the Reapers, those things are deadly. <laughs> I mean, those are those are scary. Those are the kind of thing that you might want a gas mask and a you know full face protection. But I didn't. Uh, also, I didn't wear gloves again. Uh, I didn't wear gloves, which I should have. Uh, there are a couple of things I would like to point out. If you have any little cuts or anything on your hands, 
and you've forgotten about them, you will remember. Um, it's also been probably a half hour and I've washed my hands thoroughly with some very good soap. Um, I am not, you know, I'm pretty, pretty good right now that my, uh, my hands are not going to be burny burny things, but uh, I, there definitely is still warmth and tingle from the capsaicin in my joints, which is good. Uh, I do have a little bit of uh, uh, osteoarthritis and this helps with mobility and uh, reducing the pain. I don't know if it's reducing the pain or if it's substituting it with a different kind. Uh, but that is uh, what I've got so far. Now I do have a bunch that are in process from last year. They've gone through the fermentation phase and are waiting to be post-processed. I haven't done them yet. Um, because that's a whole other process that I need to go through, and this took me several hours today to do. Uh, when you pick the peppers, you need to process them within about a week. Even if you keep them refrigerated, you need to process them or freeze them or dehydrate them. Otherwise, they are going to start rotting. And while the fermentation process is a kind of controlled rot, the process that happens when you have oxygen and don't have a perfectly sterile environment is uh, unpleasant. So a lot of that is going to, uh, you know, some of those are going to go to waste, which is unfortunate. I'm also taking select ones and I'm dehydrating them, uh, partly to get seeds for the next generation. and partly because I want to have some dehydrated peppers around. Uh, I will be getting another harvest, or two, or three, I don't know yet. Uh, the peppers are still going, there's still flowers, uh, there are still unripe pods, and there are enough of them that I know I'm going to get more, uh, more harvest out of this. So we'll see. Um, I've got 13 batches right now that are going toward hot sauce. I don't know that I'm going to do any more sauce batches. I might take the next ones that come. It'll depend, I guess, on how much I get from the harvest. Um, however they come out, you know, if I'm getting smaller amounts, I will probably take some, dehydrate them for seed, uh, take another, take others, and freeze them. Um, I'll probably do a monster mash batch at the end of the end of the season. It's kind of the uh, one of the final things that I do is is the end of the year when I, you know the plants are going to you know get frost killed or they've been frost killed. Uh, so there will be there will be a monster mash batch at the end, but we're still a ways from that. Anyway. I uh, wanted to catch up to you know, kind of the process of what's going on because it's something I do and hopefully it's a little interesting. Uh, I think I'm going to have enough to have uh, to have some that I can sell this year. We'll see. Uh, I need to make the sauce first and make it palatable and delicious. Um, but that's not done yet. so. We'll go with it. Anyway, until next time. See ya. So, quick update. Uh, it's two days after I put this one in the vacuum sealer and sucked all the air out of it. And as I was telling you, the fermentation process can take off. <laughs> and this one has taken off. Now, as you can see, the bag is uh, pretty swollen, but it's not, you know, super tight. So I'm going to let this go for another day, and uh, if it is still going as ebulliently as it is now, which it most likely will be, I'll have to do the, uh, the little pokey tape thing and get it so that it's not going to go splody boom all over the place. This is the jalapeno mix. 1,400 grams of jalapenos, 42 grams of salt. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much all it is.